Thank you, Mr. Rouser. We appreciate your time today and thank you for coming. The chair will now recognize Mr. Swikert. Mr. Swikert. Chairman? Mr. Um, Swiker, thank you. Let me begin by saying thank you for coming. You've been a great champion of these budgetary issues. And uh, I know you've got a chart there. And Yeah, oh, it had, needs to be a chart. Um, look, I'll do this actually fairly quickly because um, I'm a bit of a heretic here. Um, yeah, the budget process, the mechanisms, the complexities don't work. Fine. Um, but that's not the primary driver of U.S. sovereign debt. Every dime, every dime a U.S. sovereign debt from today through the next 30 years comes from two places. Its health care cost is number one. And this slide's already a year out of date. Um, if you factor in the new interest rates, that top line could be as high as $130 trillion of borrowing over the next 30 years. Now, that's not inflation adjusted, but just understand, today, um, Social Security is number one. Gross interest is now over a trillion dollars, so it's number two. Medicare now is number three. Defense is now number four. Um, the, on the chart here is in eight and a half years, nine years, um, Social Security has about a, a $600 billion shortfall. Even if you do what the left has suggested of raise the caps, a couple other things, in our best, we're, we're working on modeling the math, it's still short. It still does not cover the shortfall. But even if you did what the left suggests of just raise all these taxes, you've now just taken away, functionally, you're now maximizing out your tax rates to you know, anyone, it's the concepts of the Laffer curve. You've maximized tax rates. You have no more capacity. And once again, health care is three quarters of the borrowing over the next three decades. So almost everything people like me will come to this microphone and talk about of changing this in the process, doing a better job of this or that, over the next couple decades, it's a rounding error. And that's really hard and really uncomfortable because the scale of the math is so difficult. Um, a few months ago, the Joint Economic Committee Republicans, did. Uh, we decided we would step on the landmine and talk about something we can do. Um, I've tagged it, I'm gonna give this to you, ask you to put it in the record, and who knows, maybe you'll have a staffer that will actually look at it. Chapter three of the Joint Economic Report talked about obesity in America. Turns out, it's a few trillion, and if you add in some of the economic effects, could be seven trillion over 10 years in savings and economic vitality and second degree, third degree, fourth degree effects. And it's also moral. If you take a look at some of the data right now, we may be about to enter into the fifth year of life expectancy in the United States becoming shorter. There's some data in there that shows one of the most powerful things you could do for income inequality for my tribal populations, rural populations, urban populations, actually is not transfers of money Turned out it wasn't even education. Oh, education was way up there. It was health. We are financing, and this is where I become a heretic, and I'm sorry it's uncomfortable. We finance through nutrition support programs the way we do them, or the way we do um, agricultural policy, the way we do these things. You've got to look at the base numbers. We're making mm. ourselves sicker, and it's the driver of the debt. And with that, um, I yield back. Thank you, Mr. Swigert. The uh, chair will now uh, welcome Mr. Timmons.